guys on um, uh, coming here this morning. I know everybody's on um, time is uh, uh, of the essence, so I'll try and be very brief. There's not a not a whole lot I can tell you about the investigation. What I will tell you is that um, uh, investigations of this type are always extremely difficult when it's one of your own. Um, from the very beginning, our agency felt that it was appropriate to have FDLE investigate this as a completely independent uh, agency so that they could present their findings to the state attorney's office. They, they did that. As you know, this morning uh, our, um, our deputy was arrested for second degree uh, murder and uh, is now going through the criminal justice process. As I said, it's never, never easy. It's um, always difficult and it's um, always sad when someone has lost their life. And uh, so today we, uh, we wanted to come out and just uh, explain why we asked FDLE to take the investigation. And, you know, in, in so many actual officer-involved shootings where the officer is on place, FDLE conducts a parallel investigation. We conduct an investigation that's respected to what happened, what led up to that moment, while FDLE investigates the officer's actions. In this case, the deputy was off-duty, had nothing to do with his uh, duty-related skills. Uh, and uh, a timing, so we asked FDLE to take the entire investigation. Uh, I think that was the right thing to demonstrate and ensure integrity of the case and also to demonstrate and ensure uh, transparency uh, in the investigation. So our state attorney's office reviewed their findings, and uh, the result was they issued a arrest warrant. So at this time, he is on unpaid administrative leave, which is uh, what we are allowed to do in accordance with our policies and procedures. Once FDLE has finalized their report and completely submitted it to the state attorney's office, we will use the basis and the substance of that report to complete our internal investigation, and then things will um, uh, follow from that point. I'll open the floor for any questions. Please keep in mind that I am limited um, in not only what I can say about the investigation, but actually in what we know about the investigation. FDLE did this uh, independent of uh, uh, us being involved, and, and again, I think that was the right way to go with it. A white unpaid leave. With, when we look at our policies and procedures, uh, that's what we're allowed to do. Uh, we will, subsequent to the criminal investigation being filed, we will do our internal investigation. We don't do it beforehand because we don't want the two to compete with each other. So once FDLE has finalized theirs, our team will then take it, finalize our internal, and at that point he will be um, uh, uh, separated from our agency. Tripp, you mentioned he was off duty. Can you talk about what he was doing there that day? Was he running errands? Was, was it a personal business? Do you have any of that uh, yeah. information? Just, just um, very limited from what I've been told, he was running some errands. And uh, um, I don't know what those errands were or anything of that nature. Can you talk about, did they have any prior relationship before this road rage incident? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, again, FDLE has done all the interviews, all the um, investigations. So if there is something of that nature, they would have it. But, to my knowledge, there, there's no prior association in capacity. Have you had any other issues with, with him as far as road rage or any behavioral issues? No, none, none whatsoever. Can you give your general impressions of the deputy? He seems like a really outgoing, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's very enthusiastic. He has a lot of law enforcement experience. Do you have your own general impressions of him? You know, um, uh, as you know, we have 1,500 members. Um, I've actually... Uh, probably had maybe three or four conversations with him. He um, always seemed very professional, always seemed, uh, uh, you know, loving of, of the job. And, uh, again, those conversations were limited. In fact, uh, the, the first one was the day that he was sworn in. But other than that, um, a very limited um, time with him. Again, just um, seemed to uh, enjoy his job and be proud to be a part of our agency. Can you talk about anything that struck you as unusual that uh – when this happened, he didn't uh, radio in, he didn't have a radio with him, or perhaps, I don't know if he did or not, but can you address that? Um, I, I don't believe he had a radio with him, um, and with again, him. yeah, FDLE uh, did, did the investigation, so I don't really have all the finer points of it. I do know that there was a point uh, after the shooting where he called 911, but to, to be able to articulate as to why he didn't, I, I don't have the answer for that. That, that would be something their investigation would have to demonstrate. I imagine it is fairly difficult for deputies to carry their weapon when they're off duty. You know, we, we encourage um, our deputies to always be armed, um, and, uh, uh, you know, they, most of them do. Um, in fact, I, I would think um, almost all of them do. So uh, generally speaking, though, they're going to they're gonna carry their, their firearm, not, um, not their radio and, and stuff of that nature. 
Sheriff, in, in a day like this, when incidences like this can cause discord in the community, what would be your message to the community of Brevard County? Well, I think that message was, uh, was sent from the very beginning, and that message was that um, we wanted to make sure we protected the integrity of the investigation and demonstrated full and complete transparency. And um, I think us turning it over to FDLE, um, asking them to do a complete independent investigation was the message. And, and you know, here, here's the end result where they presented their findings to the state attorney's office. As I said, it's always difficult when it's one of your own, but I fully believe in the criminal justice system. I fully believe in its opportunity to completely and fully vet each and every case. And uh, I, I think this was absolutely the best way to go. And I've had some conversations with a number of members of our, of our community since the um, arrest took place this morning, and each one of them was very appreciative of the fact that we turned it over to a complete independent investigation. I understand this is an FDLE case, but can you go into any detail at all about the encounter, uh, about the incident, what led to it, uh, and then what led up to what happened, and then did he stay at the scene? You know, um, I, I can't really, other than to say that it appears that it, it pursued or followed from a road rage incident. And, uh, you know, I, I said at the scene that um, that day when I first spoke to the, the press um, corps that was there, that there appeared to be a self-defense mechanism to it. But I also said that we need to wait and see where all the pieces come together. And, and that's why it was so important to have an independent investigation of that, to, to let all those pieces come together and let our state attorney look at it with, with a, um, a close eye and, and see how this thing needed to go. What was that self-defense mechanism? Or well, what that might have been? In, in a road rage incident, you, you have somebody that's obviously, uh, or in that particular instance, you have somebody that's obviously fired. Um, the, the initial thing that we learned at the scene from Palm Bay PD, who was the first responding agency, was that it looked like there was some self-defense mechanism to it. But, the thing with self-defense is the state attorney's office has to look at it and see if self-defense applied. And so that's where that's where I think they looked at the case and, and felt that these were the appropriate charges. Anything else? All right, well, um, as I said, I know time is of the essence for you guys, but I, I greatly appreciate your patience in setting up with us today. And, and uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out for um, Corporal Jacobs, and, and uh, we'll get you anything we can. All right, thank you, everybody.